As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. You only live today once. Why do it alone? Branch together. Welcome to Branch Together, where we read and reflect on one chapter of the Bible every day to help you kickstart the most important habit in your day. Uh, Today we're starting the book of Hebrews. Let's just acknowledge something here, the elephant in the room, if you will. Hebrews is a bit challenging. I love it though. I I love it because even though there are parts that I don't understand, uh, God still speaks to me through its pages. There's a richness and a depth that is wonderful and beautiful. It's easy to get lost in the twists and turns of the structure or its complex arguments, or perhaps the obscure people mentioned or figures of speech. That's okay. I firmly believe that this book doesn't have to be intimidating. It was a book written for a purpose, and when we see the reasoning behind it, there's a lot to glean from it. I'll try to give you a little bit each day to chew on. I'm not going to explain everything, but we can pray that God speaks to us about how this word should come to bear on our lives. Let's pray and start with chapter one of this great book. God, we are humbled approaching you through your word. You are the creator of the world, the one who put the stars in the sky and put the heartbeats in our heart and the breath in our lungs. And yet you speak to us through your word. God, we know this book uh, has been seen to be challenging, but we believe that you can speak to us through this. We believe that you have something for us today as we are faithful in this habit of Bible reading. Speak to us today, encourage us, and shape our lives to be transformed into what you want them to be. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1. After God spoke long ago in various portions and in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets, in these last days, He has spoken to us in a son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he created the world. The son is the radiance of his glory and the representation of his essence and he sustains all things by his powerful word. And so when he had accomplished cleansing for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Thus he became so far better than the angels as he has inherited a name superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have fathered you. In another place, he says, I will be his father and he will be my son. But when he again brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And he says of the angels, he makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and a righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. So God, your God, has anointed you over your companions with the oil of rejoicing. And you founded the earth in the beginning, Lord, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you continue, and they will all grow old like a garment, and like a robe you will fold them up, and like a garment they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will never run out. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits? sent out to serve those who will inherit salvation. 
I'm going to read the first few words of this chapter again. After God spoke long ago in various portions and in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets, in these last days, he has spoken to us in a son. Here's the big introduction this author gives us. He says, in the past, God spoke to people in various ways. In the Old Testament, the people of God heard from God through the prophets. People were reliant on those messengers to receive revelation from God. But now, in these last days, things are different. The last days is a term to, uh, it's, a, it's a term, kind of a technical term that specifically refers to a period of time. And it's the period of time after Jesus initially ascended to the period when he descends again, where he comes back. This is the era that we're in now. It doesn't necessarily mean that the author expected Jesus to come back that week or something like that. Uh, but the last days was the term he used to refer to that era. So in our era, things are different from back in the days of the prophets. We don't have to wait for God to speak through prophets. Today, we have the most wonderful communication directly from God, a way of speaking that people in the Old Testament could have only dreamt of. Today, today we have Jesus, and he is God himself who has come to earth and revealed himself to us. So as, as we have just recently read the Gospel of Matthew and before that the Gospel of Mark, we see stories of God himself in Jesus. We learn the character of God and we learn to love him. Jesus is the source and the subject of our faith. So to recap the main point, I want us to consider this. I want us to get this from the intro. In the Old Testament, God spoke through the prophets, but now he speaks through Jesus. Which leaves me thinking, if God is speaking today through Jesus, what does it look like for us to listen to God? We're going to explore that tomorrow as we uncover the, the main key to this whole book. I, I believe the, the key to frame this up is right in the beginning of chapter two. For now though, let's pray. Let's pray that God gives us ears to hear what he has for us. It's Friday, so let me say that if you aren't part of a local church, I encourage you to find a good church family near you. If you need help, let me know. We can always help you wherever you are. Uh, we uh, reach out to our friends to find good churches in that area. I, I, I challenge you to really take that seriously this weekend. Okay, see you Monday.